Well, joining us now to discuss how people can respond to this is Greg Schaefer. He is the founder of the Schaefer Security Group, a retired special agent with the FBI. And he's also the author of the new book, Stay Safe, Security Secrets for Today's Dangerous World. Greg, when you hear about these incidents and you, you, you appreciate the fact that there were three incidents in less than a week, leading to such a tremendously high death toll. What advice could you give people if they ever find themselves in that unfortunate situation where there is a person attacking them with a gun? Well, first and foremost, you have to have good situational awareness. You have to be aware of what's happening around you at all times, whether you're at a church, sense. a grocery store, a local Walmart, or in school. And if you hear what you think is gunfire, think that it's gunfire because we have a tendency to rationalize our fears away. Most witnesses, when questioned after an active shooter event, are asked, what did they think when they first heard the gunfire? And most of them say, I thought it was fireworks, or I thought it was a car backfiring, because we rationalize those fears away. So if you think you hear gunfire, think that it's gunfire, and the first thing you need to do is move. Don't freeze in fear. Train your body to move. The hit rate on a moving target with a handgun is 4%. The hit rate for a shooter with a long gun is about 10%. So you have over 90% chance of not being shot by doing one simple thing, running, moving. As we say in my world, get off the X. So that first and foremost is get away and create as much distance as you can from the shooter. Hiding does not work. Hiding gets you killed. The average distance of an active shooter killing his victims in America is less than five feet. It's those that hide are those that are become victims. Greg, but what happens if you find yourself in a situation where you can't run backwards and the only way out is in the direction of the shooter? Is it still the best approach to try and move even though you may be running directly at the shooter? Well, you want to be smart about it. You want to zigzag and, and you want to create distance. So if it, running right toward the shooter is probably not a wise idea. But still, with that 4% hit rate, the odds are in your favor. He won't hit you. The shooter is going to look for the easy target. The easy target are those that are frozen in fear or are cowering in the floor or are cowering underneath their desk or behind a cash, cash register. Those are the easy targets. So those are the targets he's going to be focusing on. So... Yeah, bottom line is move, run as fast as you can and create that distance between you and the shooter. Well, now there is this debate, Greg, about what legislation, if any, could reduce these kind of mass shootings. Someone that has been in the security business and has been responsible for ensuring the safety of so many people for so long, is there a particular piece of legislation or government action that you think could indeed help prevent these kind of shootings? You know, it's a multifaceted solution for this problem. It, it, it's, it's having the FBI create better relationships with social media uh, providers. So they, social media providers can help identify those on the Internet who are putting out this filth and this hatred and these threats. It's having red flag type of programs to help working with uh, mental health providers and identifying those that shouldn't have access to weapons. It, it's, it's, getting a ban it's getting background checks done between two individual citizens buying weapons from each other. There's a background check mandatory if you buy it from a gun store, but you can buy a gun from your best friend and there's no background check, so that's a loophole. But bottom line, you can legislate all you want. You're still not gonna legislate evil away. There will always be evil. Evil exists. You take away all the guns, they turn to knives. You take away all the knives, they'll turn to bats or vehicles. Keep in mind that one of the biggest mass killings in, in the world was in Nice, France, back in July 14th, a couple years ago, and that individual killed 86 people using a white truck. So do you then advocate for people to be able to defend themselves by having their own firearm? Because it sounds like that's what you're suggesting is the best way to prevent yourself from being a victim. Well, I spent 31 years in law enforcement, so yes, I'm a big proponent of those carrying their own weapons, but they need to be proficient they need to train and need to practice. Not everybody does that. They become more of a danger to themselves and to others if they just carry a weapon and not, be, and not train with it and not be good with it when uh, they're under stress and they need to take that accurate shot in a Walmart 20 yards away. So bottom line is yes, I think everybody should have the right to be armed if they chose to, if they choose to do so, but there comes a responsibility with that. All right, so if you're gonna have a weapon, 
make sure you know how to use it responsibly. Greg, thank you so much. Greg Schaefer, appreciate it.